What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is JD, the, uh, I don't know, Ex- the squid to my octopus. I was going to say the expected goals to my real goals. My f- but... oh, fancy sounds are stupid. <laughs> oh, they're just, oh, the, the, my, the brain genius analytics guy that wants somebody to play well and not score. Amazing. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite thing. Um mm-hmm. Also, Atlanta analytics guys and uh, and fancy and uh, hockey men do the exact same thing. My way is but the just, only way, and then they but just in. on the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, great, cool. Yep. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, what a weird way to start. I was gonna say squid to octopus. I don't know. Feeling some seafood, mm. octopi are fun. The kraken were released last night. Mm-hmm. I guess. Do you think they're gonna say release the kraken after before every game? Uh, probably. That's probably gonna be the thing. They the real thing they should do. Somebody I forget who mentioned this on Twitter, but somebody's like, they, that's what they should say when one of them gets out of the penalty box. Is you really oh, I saw, I saw, I saw, yeah. I, saw that. I saw that. That'd be that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, because like how, some, how fast though though that be annoying. Uh, I mean, everything Vegas says is annoying. Even though it's like really well done, it's still just really annoying. And pe- like people have asked me about it, like, oh, did you see the Vegas intro? I was like, yeah. Like, isn't that cool? I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, dude, the intros the intros are pretty cool. I just, I, yeah, it's fine. It's it's actually cool that they did that, but I don't know. It's uh, not that's, not we're here, that's not what we're here to talk about. The Sharks started the season with seven rookies on their opening night roster, so we thought it would be a good little time to to go in and see how they fared in the first seven, six games. I almost said seven mm-hmm. again. This first six games of the season, see kind of where they are, because I think a big part of the Sharks' success this season hinged on which of the rookies could step up and provide value or at least steady the ship. Because we all remember last year, top six was thin. The bottom line had Patrick Marlowe on it uh, and a rotating cast of merry men. Not a lot of uh, excitement other than Kinejov stepping in and, and being a nice little beacon of life. <laughs> Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So we're going to go, let's start with the NA guys. We'll cover these guys off real quick. So there's two non-applicable or uh, incomplete guys. That's Jonah Gajovic and who's played one game. And look yep. fine, but we can't really say one way or the other. Like, hey, yeah, cool. He should be playing more, or something like that. It, it's hard after one game. Uh, yep. The other one is Santeri Hataka. Whenever he's not on the ice, the other Sharks player should be saying, "Where is Santeri?" <laughs> Where's Santeri? And Where's whenever Santeri? the game starts, people should be asking, "Where is Santeri?" Yep. But he hasn't played yet. He's just been languishing in the press box. So I uh, hope he's getting his fill of gummy bears and hot dogs. I wonder if the hot dogs are good up there. I don't know. I wonder. Are you a hot dog guy? Do you like a good hot dog? I do like a good hot dog. I used to when I was younger not like them, really? but uh, I'm yeah, I'm back in the pro hot dog camp now. Are you are you a hot dog or a sausage guy? Like if there's a Polish uh, sausage or a hot dog, I'm going with the sausage between the two. But uh, mine's very mood based. Yeah, I can sometimes see every once in a while you want that nice snap of the casing, mm-hmm. that nice disgusting mystery meat that a hot dog is. Like I, I had a Costco dog the other day for the first time oh, in like over the, a year. They're the best, buddy. There Buddy, and the bun gets a little hot in the um, in the tin foil, so it kind of sticks to the dog. And when you bite, mm-hmm. oh, it's just mm, mm-hmm. it's so good. Put some of those diced onions on top of it. Catch up. I liked when you, you see at the sauerkraut with them. But I don't think they do the sauerkraut anymore. So. No, maybe up here. Yeah, because we but. still have some other stuff. But anyway, we still have the sausages up here too, mm. uh, which is cool. Yeah, I got a hot dog and a Polish, which is awesome. There you go. So, you know the story about the Costco, the like CEO was like, "Don't raise yeah. the prices on her. I'm gonna kill, I'll you. kill yeah. you." Yeah. Yes. Hey, love that man. <laughs> Yep. Go him. Down with capitalism. <laughs> so yeah, Hitaka and Gajovic can't really talk much about them because mm. they haven't done anything yet. So we hope Santeri gets into the game. We hope to see more of Gajovic. Uh he had a good little debut. But anyway, let's get to the let's get to the power brokers here. Do you want to start at the top or do you want to start at the bottom and work our way up like a mountain climb? Uh let's start with what the people came here for. William Which, ooh, there's two though. Oh, but we could start with Jonathan Darlene, the superior rookie. The superior rookie. So, uh, where if you want to start Darlene, we can do Darlene. So, no, let's start with E5. Okay, we'll start with E5. So, uh, let me give so they were going to do this. We're going to give some of his fancy stats and then, um, talk about you know, kind of his contribution so far and what we think of of how he's been doing. So, 
William Eklund has played five games. He has three assists, all on the power play. 13, 18 uh, average time on ice. Corsi four events, 31. Corsi allowed, 46 for 40.26%. Uh, shots four when he's on the ice, 14 to 18. Expected goals for 1.24 to 1.64. And then high danger chances for 9 to 6. So, Mr. Eklund. Famously on scratched. The, famously scratched. And his ice time in the toilet. And his time has been going down. But Mr. Eklund, when he's on the ice, he has been causing magic, as we saw three potential plays in the last game against um, uh, against the Predators. You know, but it has been a little bit of an up and down, especially in the offensive zone for him. So I'm not worried. I know people are like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing ever. Why isn't he just burning down the NHL? He'll get there. But are people saying that? People are people are a little, you know, like, oh, he should go back to Sweden. He should go to the AHL, stuff like that. And it's like, no, he's he's a he's 19 years old. He's played six games, and it was he was just or five games, and he was just on his first road trip. Like, let's pump the brakes. Eklund but is I don't doing think fine. that's the way Bob sees it. So that's the problem. Yeah. So, I personally think like he's been fine. He's a skilled yeah. guy. You can't put him in the fourth line. I mean, the fourth line did have a chance as soon as he went there, but you need to put him in a position to succeed, which is what we talked about all off season with, with Darlene and Eklund put them in a skill position to succeed. But I don't know if uh, the old dinosaur coaching is going to see it that way. And, and I, I'm just so dismayed by the fact that Bob felt the need to point out that Nashville was big. And so he couldn't play Eklund which is it's just I guess Elias Patterson just doesn't exist in this league or yeah the point or Nikita Kucherov or Johnny Godro or at there's t- plenty Tyler of full or Cole Caulfield there, there's so many small guys yeah. that can see Alex to scored 40 goals I, I just it's such an outmoded way of thinking so I think he's got off to a B start yeah I agree with that I think this homestand though is a chance for especially with some kind of weaker competition here playing at home for a nice stretch um, I think we see we see Eklund pop off here. I wouldn't be surprised. So I, I hope so. And I, I don't yeah. think I don't think giving him a B grade from me is is necessarily saying he's been bad no. or anything like that. And I don't. As much as we we hyped Eklund all off season, we can still see the flashes. I don't think any of us expected him to come in and burn burn down the league and, down and, and yeah. have ten points in five games or anything like that. But um, I, I think he's he's adapting. And it's going to be a long haul, and and but he's got the skills and the maturity and stuff like that. Like at the beginning of yesterday's game, it c- was very clear that he took to heart what Bob said and started working on that, and had five on five time and had ozone time and stuff like that. So, I, I I just hope that they expand his leash a little bit and let him work through some of the stuff and let him get a little tired and 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 yeah. figure out what's best for him. Um, because I just don't want to see, I don't want to see a promising player. Just, back go, away, and, just yeah. go away because Bob can't be bothered to play him against a team that hits you. Nah. So Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, th- I think he's on the right track and, you know, like we have to be patient with him, but you know, um, yeah, I'd rather see, I'd rather see him playing NHL games than, yeah. than, than not. Um, okay. Let's get to the actual rookie of the year. Well, before we do that, Kyle, you know, there's a place we can bet on where who's going to be the rookie of the year. Do you know where That's that place true. is? The gambling store. The gambling store, yes. And what if you wanted to go online to go to the gambling store because you don't want to leave your house? Do that at betonline.ag. Jonathan Dahlin is in, I think he's in the top six or seven of betting odds right now. You can get to him. Go play some odds. He's he's good. And he's a little bit older, so you know Mm -hmm. we'll be able to sustain what he's doing rather than maybe hitting a rookie wall. But Bet Online is back and better than ever, ever, ever. Ooh, ever. I was trying to say web and ever at the same time. A new web interface for the start of the basketball and hockey season. There's more props. There's more odds. There's more lines than ever before. Bet online remains your number one spot for all the basketball, football, hockey action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball, football, baseball, playoffs, hockey, boxing, Aussie football, high motorsports. motor sports. Go check it out. Cricket. They might have your favorite sport. Cooking? Cricket. Cricket. Yeah, there you go. If you're French, cricket. Favorite Vegas casino games? Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online 
where the game starts. Okay. All right. Jonathan Dahlin, our new hero. Our new hero. Dahlin, uh, six games, three goals, including two game winners, two assists, uh, 14, uh, 10 time on ice, and that's been kind of going up. Corsi, four. So when he's on the ice, he's been doing positive stuff. 76 uh, to 68, 52.78%. Shots for six, 43 to shots allowed, 27, which is really nice to see. Um, that offensive line has been also shutting down defensively. Expected goals for 3.69% or 3.69 goal expected goals for compared to 2.46 allowed. High danger chances, 25 to 12. We've talked about this line is cooking. We love the with gas. With gas. Multiple gases, all the gases, but we love the what, the construction of this line when you have Timo, who's just been on his horse and just plowing God, through Timo people. Timo is such a man. He is such Jeez, a man right now. What, um, what a what a lord. What a way to start the season. Yes. Katorg doing Kator things. And then Darlene, who's been able to kind of come in and clean up goals and be in the right spot. Yeah. This line is cooking and Darlene has been... When Couture, you know, we, I think it was yesterday after the game, Couture said he wanted Darlene to play with him, and it's been a really nice fit. What a, what a corny quote. Why does everything Logan Couture say is so corny? Um, <laughs> I know I know what he's saying, but like it was yeah. so, so wrapped up in such a little cornball quote. It's okay. But coming into this season, I think we were expecting Darlene to be not a major part, but like an impact player for San Jose, especially last year after he had a million points in the all yes. Um led the league, helped Timra get up to the SHL. I think that we knew the talent was there. I know a lot of the models and stuff would say that he's a lost cause because he's too old. He hasn't played games and stuff like that. I, We're I taking just, a victory lap. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, nerds. Get out of here, nerds. <laughs> But I think there was, I think there was to be expected some adjustment period. But he's come over and not needed that at all. Um, I think it really helps that he's played with good players. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting for the poltergeist in your in oh, your, in your house so to high. stop with the blinds. Yeah. <laughs> um, the joys, the joys of recording in the middle of the day. Uh, yes. Dogs are active. But no, Darlene, Darlene, I think that I think we. I personally for multiple years have been like, this guy's going to be the absolute truth. Uh, mm -hmm. Just let him, let him get right. I think there was the way he was treated in Utica. I mean, he was drafted by Ottawa, then traded to Vancouver, then sent to Utica. Utica sucks. Then he was traded to San Jose, then got a concussion. I think going home for two years and just letting, really letting himself get back to enjoying hockey and, and figuring out where he wanted to be and stuff was very beneficial. And I thought there was going to be a, an adjustment period, but Bob did the thing where he put him in a position to succeed. And he is succeeding. I don't see. Yeah, imagine that. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't keep up. He's got what four points? Uh, he has five, three goals, two assists, and he's been stonewalled twice, like on two amazing. Yeah. You know, so he I don't know if he's going to go at like right a now. point a point eight clip for yeah. all season. But if he finishes around like point six point per game or something like that, uh, like 50, 60 points, like I mean, that's that's kind of the uh, there's a Vander Kane's replacement. Uh, yep. next year because he's going to continue to rise. He's still young enough that he's got runway in front of him. I, I just, darlene has been everything I think we wanted and more so far. And he's playing on the power play. He was out at the end of the game when they needed a goal. Has he played protecting a lead yet? No, I know they were a little, especially at the beginning, they were a little bit more hesitant on, uh, Putting him out there when they, but that's why you you sign your Coglianos, like Cogliano, yeah, exactly. yeah, and, and your you know, you have your Nietos, your Coglianos, Beninos, and stuff like that who can play with the lead, and then when you need a goal, like that's what he's for. Honestly, honestly, at this point, I don't really think Nieto should be out there protecting a lead, and Darlene should just be out there. Darlene, Darlene works really hard away from the puck, and I think that's what's been most enjoyable too. Is that not only I love that he's just like on the power play to stick straight in the air, like please send me the puck. Um, I, I think that he's working hard. He's going to the front of the net. How many times do you see 76? 76? 76. It's so confusing with 72 being Eklund and also Bear Banov being like 91 and Rudy being 93. Uh, all, 92 and 94. So. 92 and 94. They're all very similar. And <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God. But you you see 76 in front of the net. You see him going into the corners. You see him making plays and stuff like that. I just the start for Darlene has just been so, so good. And and I don't see how anybody could be disappointed in what he's brought to the team so far. 
Yeah, one thousand percent. And like you said, he's only going to get better. We were like, maybe he might be a twenty goal scorer. He might actually be a twenty twenty five goal scorer if he. Yeah, yeah which, 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 and if you're playing with Kator and Meyer, they're going to give you plenty of chances to score. So exactly, especially with how well they're playing and stuff like that. Do you think with his uh, first NHL paycheck, he bought a car? You know, I wonder that that's that's a good question. If he bought a car, or if he bought a new car, or if maybe if he bought a maybe he likes to tinker with cars, and you know, and needs Ooh. to buy some parts for his cars. So if I was him, you know, I know that first NHL paycheck it might be nice, but it's not like you're not making Brent Burns money, so you might need to save a couple of dollars. That's where RockAuto.com comes in. So RockAuto.com is a family website where you can purchase parts for your vehicle. And it doesn't matter what type of car you have. You have a daily driver, you got a cool car, you have a classic car. They have everything you need. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend up to 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or delivery car or dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store or $216 from rockauto.com. They're reliably low for every customer. They have everything you need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. So go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked in. Now, how'd you hear about us, Box? That way they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliable prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Yeah, so I think I think Darlene and Eklund being the two premier rookies coming in was pretty obvious, and we were hoping they'd be big contributors. I, I think Eklund's got off to... Uh, more in between start. I think I think it's encouraging, but hasn't been exactly what you wanted. But I think I think if Eklund's start was a B, Darlene's start is got to be A minus A. Yeah, agreed. I don't, he's, I don't know he's how been much amazing. Of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he's been amazing. So let's go to let's keep hopping down the lineup. Who's next? Let's go with uh, Lord Jasper Weatherby. So uh, remember, Weatherby's the Lord is about royalty, not about God. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so Weatherby has played six games, two goals, one assist, 12.52 uh, average time on ice in that time. Um, his fancy numbers aren't as dazzling as the other ones. So Corsi 4, 31, Corsi allowed 56, so 35.63. Shots 4, 9, shots allowed 31. Um, and then expected goals 4.56, expected goals allowed 2.19, high danger chances 2, high danger chances allowed 10. So again, this is that 5 on 5 play. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, so his the thing about the Lord is that he plays in the power play, but he does Yeah. He hasn't been amazing. He's been perfectly cromulent. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. Uh yeah, but I think I think this he's one of those guys where the eye test does a little bit more than the numbers behind it with him and Bob likes him because you know he's been give, he's been you he's can kind big. of see his yeah he's big and but his role has been kind of expanding you know like um in crunch time against the Bruins he's out there when they need a goal when it's six on five you know and like he's been getting defensive zone starts and stuff like that so um I'm yeah, positive he serves, I, he serves a purpose yeah he team. serves a purpose none of us expected him to be amazing he there's a reason he was battling for 4C and Jonathan Dolino and William Eklund are in the top six yeah there's, but he's doing what he's difference. asked you know, yeah, he's doing the numbers are a little the numbers are a little gross. Uh, they they can be better, hurts. but I mean, <laughs> it's it is what it is. I he's he's going to be big 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 yeah. man in front of the net uh, on the power play. He's going to be banging in greasy goals so long as he's not getting absolutely filled in uh, mm -hmm. every shift. I think I think you can't really ask much more than that. Banging a couple goals, grab a couple assists, maybe fight a dude, stick up for other guys. I, I don't. Uh, I think that's I think that's kind of where we're at with the Lord. Um, but do you feel like he's a better like with like Gambrell? Like he provides a little bit more offense and he can do a little bit more than Gambrell did. And yeah, you know, of course, of course. So and, like, and he's younger, so there's more runway for him to learn and stuff like that. It just he just he disappeared there for a minute, <laughs> which is fine. Came back again. against Boston. Uh, yeah. So I mean, there's gonna be. There's going to be moments when you're a rookie, especially that you go up and down and, and you're mm -hmm. not exactly going to be lights out every game and stuff like that. I would like to see him disappear, like completely disappear less. But so long as I'm sure if we go game by game, oh, we might see the we'll, we'll see the games where he was a little bit more effective and stuff like that. But out of a fourth liner, he's playing what? What's his average time on ice? Like 10 minutes? Uh, no, his average time on ice is uh, 12.52. So, yeah, he's not that far behind Eklund, actually. He's God, I hate this coaching staff. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord has been cromulented. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I'd rather have him playing 4C and learning the ropes and stuff like that than than Dylan Gambrell or Noah Gregor or Patrick Marlowe or 
pick your pick your random shark du jour. Uh, yeah, I think I, th- I think letting him grow, and I think he's going to get better. Obviously, this is what sixth NHL game. Yeah, can't really. You know, he went from college to straight to the NHL, so you know that that's a big jump there. So, yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm I think he's he's done well. Like you said, a couple games here and there where he's you know he's going to have his rookie mistakes, but. They did a good job, like putting him with Cogliano, who like Cogliano is going to help him out as a ton. And yeah, I wonder what the Cogliano numbers are because I don't. Uh, let's find out. I, I um, don't. Uh, I don't know. Cogliano's been amazing, per se. So Cogliano, he's been. I mean, kind of close. Well, yeah, he's pretty similar numbers um, to Weatherby. A little bit better on the expected goals for, um, but and the like high danger chances are a little bit better, but yeah, he, he's, that's his role. So, yep. Yeah. I, but it, it's, it, if you're giving up high danger chances to like the other team's third and fourth line, that's, you know, one thing compared to like giving up high danger chances to like the team's first line. So not every high danger chance is the same, you know, like if Logan Couture or Timo Meyer giving up high danger chances to the perfection line against the Bruins. And then, you know, that's so one thing, yeah, to keep in I mind. guess, Maybe William Eklund has to go down. Well, William Eklund's numbers were better than Jasper's, right? Yes. So, okay, so and then even I guess like a C, C plus for the Lord, but I mean that's kind of unfair. I would give him a maybe B. a B minus. I think of a solid B because you know he has they play different things. They have different utilities. They have different. He's you know, doing what's asked of him, and like that's you know, and like you know, he's had a couple couple moments here and there of of rookie mistakes. He's had a couple of flashes of you know that that goal against the Bruins that uh, helped kind of spark it and the team. And like, he had a nice two on one chance that the defender just made a good, good play there um, against the predators. Like he's doing what's asked of him. So he's, he yeah. was not asked to come in and score 20 goals. So, you yeah. know, he's just be a steady presence that can give you 12 minutes, 10 minutes a night on the fourth line. I, I guess that's fair. I yep. guess that's fair. Um, maybe William Eklund should be a B minus. Ah, I guess they just do two different things. Do I, different I think, things. I think all three, all three, all three of those forwards so far have been really encouraging. Um, yes, especially Dolly. Dolly has just been oh, chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. What a what a guy! All right, the last one. No, there's two uh, more. Uh, the last forward. The last forward. All right, so we'll do um, Bear Banoff. Pedersen's only played a few games, but we also have uh, like since Bear Banoff played last year, and I know he's a fan favorite. Um, yeah, here you go, guy on Twitter. Even though small sample That's size. That's in our Bear Banoff mentions constantly. Yes. Uh, so Bear Banoff's played two games, one assist, 1531 time on ice. Uh, Corsi 4, 12, Corsi allowed 22, so 35.29%. Shots 4, 7 compared to shots allowed 14. Expected goals 0.22, expected goals allowed 0.64, one high danger chance 4, and one and three high danger chances allowed. So I think with Bear season, Banoff, it's, it's a little unfair. He's only played two games and was injured. Small sample size, yeah. So... Eventually, that He's, sample size is going to run out. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know what to think of Barabanov, to be honest. Like, like you, I see, didn't mind seeing him on the power play. Yeah, he's, I didn't got, mind he's got the skill to, the, to score goals, so I didn't yeah. mind seeing him on the power play. I didn't like that it was at the case of William Eklund. I think William Eklund is more creative. Yes, um, but if you want to work Barabanov in there for for something, then I, I don't mind that at all. I just it's tough when he was on the fourth. Like, he was on the third line or second line, and then he was on the fourth line, and then he was getting jostled all around. It's not. Is best. that good? Because like we've asked, you know, like you know, like put Darlene with good players, and then put, but you run out of like the put him with good players at some point, and it's like, you know, like Rudy, we can see bouncing up and down because that's what Rudy does. He's kind of like that Jack, you know, Jack of all trades guy who can. Yeah, Bear Bottom is more of a skill guy. Yeah, so I wonder if seeing, but then like a hurdle Bear Banoff Eklund line, like kind of seeing giving them a little bit longer leash and see what they can do. Um, but then I kind of feel like poor hurdle has got to drive all the play on that line. So, and he's, he's, yeah, that's a lot to ask of hurdle. So we'll see. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do with bear. Banoff. I'm open to seeing more bear Banoff. Yes. I, yeah, I, wanna see I would more. like, I would like to see Nieto scratched and bear Banoff sliding in there. Um, and then bringing back a Gajoyevich or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Lane Pedersen. I, I just, or the, doing the Benino bear Banoff LeBanc line. Like that's, that's fun. Know, yeah. So. I like that. Oh, but LeBanc's been playing playing well. So move him up and move Rudy down. I don't mind that either. Yeah. Uh, I just I, I think Bear Banoff's numbers are, are are kind of shitty, but at the same time, he hasn't really 
like six games compared to two games is, is, is in this is, is hard to, there's mm-hmm. a difference there. So I don't know. I, I think, I think there's something there, but I mean, at the same time, if he's going to be the 13th forward in, in and out of the lineup, he's got to make hay when he gets in the, into the lineup. And I don't think he did. Yep. Um, he did play 15 minutes last game. So like, I mean, the coach is obviously like something like there's something there. And I think if we do this again in six or seven more games, yeah. I, I think bear Banoff might be more of a regular. I just think we need to see a little bit more of him, but I like, I mean, the numbers the the numbers are kind of bad, but I mean he's got one high danger chance for and one high danger chance against. Like what? Or three against. Three against. So what, maybe yeah, the what numbers are just bad. Maybe he's just bad. So I want to see bigger sample size. So yeah, I think especially at home here, let's. We got to stop. I, we got to stop with the nine games that he played in San Jose last year. We're we're yes. over that. Yes. <laughs> Moving forward, twirling towards freedom, everybody. All right. Uh, the Lane last has four, played what two games? Uh, Lane Pedersen's played f- uh, four games this year. No Jesus, points. Really. Uh, 11, 25 time on ice. And then his, let's see, uh, Corsi Ford, 21 to 57, uh, for 26.92 shots for seven to 26 and then high danger chances three to 11. So I guess there's a reason why he's like 24 and hasn't played in the NHL yet. Yeah, he's, uh, I would like to see bear ban off before Patterson. I bear ban off should leapfrog him as the 13th, 12th guy. Yep. Um, and I think Gajoyevic should be as well, so we can see them. And I don't. I think Patterson can just chill in the press box for a minute while we, while while the Sharks sort out what's going on with some of these other guys because that's well, not good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not, not good. great. Not great, Bob. That's not great. So, okay, let's get to the last guy. I don't. I don't know. If we need to talk about Lane. I don't know if there's Lane. If there's Patterson heads out there, let us know. But uh, yes. I don't think there is. So. All right, so uh, our, our fan favorite, Jacob Middleton here. Six the games. most cromulent player on the Sharks. <laughs> Six games, one assist, 1655 time on ice. Corsi 470. Uh, Corsi allowed 98, 41.67. Uh, shots 437. Shots allowed 48. Expected goals for 2.75. Expected goals allowed 333. High danger chances for 16. High danger chances allowed 14. So He's been a positive player. Not too bad. How the hell did this happen? <laughs> I don't know, man. So. man. He's old as shit, too. Like he's been around for like six years already. Yeah. Um maybe, yeah, maybe we were. I don't know. He's fine. He's been doing what is asked of him. It, I still think the ceiling is lower than if we get Hataka. Yes. Because Hataka brings a little something and he's younger. But I mean, you cannot I cannot sit here with a straight face. Well, I could. I'm, I could, but I can't ethically. Yeah. In my plums, I cannot say it and be like, "Ah, oh, Middleton should be out of this lineup." I could say it for the first couple games. I could say mm-hmm. it for the first couple games, but now we have a body of work where it's perfectly fine. It's I wish perfect. that position was better, and I yes. think Kanijov raises that up. But when he's back, Middleton could take Shimek spot. Yeah, if Hataka doesn't ever play again, maybe Hataka, <laughs> maybe Hataka, ha- maybe Hataka's dead. Maybe we just don't know. <laughs> It's funny we see that. So, like, even so, Shimmick's uh, numbers. So, Corsi 4, 47 to 54, 46.53. Um, shots for 24 to 22. They're out shooting. Um, and then high danger chances for uh, for Shimmick is 8 to 8. So, but Shimmick can't make a pass. That's the problem with Shimmick and Vlasic because, like, that's where the numbers Look, do, are. Like, do Vlasic's numbers now. Yeah. Like, um, I'm Vlasic. Sure it's awful. Um, so his are Corsi 4, 54 to 61. Um, shots 4, 27 to 25. So they're actually out shooting when he's on the ice. And then um, high danger chances for 13 to 9. So, yeah. The, way the problem with that. I literally watched them play and been like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my the life. The problem with them is they just get like sealed into their own zone so often because neither, because Vlasic <laughs> or Shimmick, neither one of them can make an entry path, like, or an ex, you know, they can't start the transition, unfortunately. And so it's like, if they're doing offensive zone starts, they're doing fine. But when they get stuck in their own zone for yeah. two minutes, does it straight, have the O zone versus D zone starts there? Uh, Ozone starts Vlasic. Um, yeah, Vlasic and Shimmick both have had eight offensive zone starts. Um, Vlasic's had 11 neutral zone starts. Shimmick has 14. And defensive zone starts uh, seven and five. 
So, so they're, they're they're getting playing. they're getting played in the neutral zone in the offensive zone on purpose. Yeah. Yes. Um that means that Burns Ferraro and, and Middleton Carlson are soaking up way more of those defensive zone starts. Yeah. So actually the defensive stone zone starts. Eric Carlson leads the team with 19 defensive zone starts. Oh, um, for the yeah. And then Brent Burns is at 13. Ferraro at 12. Is this for the whole season? Oh, this is at 5v5. 5v5, yeah. So um let's see he's only started his own 19 times that seems weird <laughs> yeah for this is yeah just five on five sets so but that's good because like carlson's good at getting the puck out of the zone and transitioning that's putting your player you know so is burns well so is burns you, well if you like icing <laughs> so it's burns oh that game was rough but yeah at least they're using vlasic shimek uh properly yeah. but i still like i mean at this point i know i'd like to theory? see another guy out there who could uh start the transition and we know who that is so it's Santeri, but at least Middleton, at least Middleton, uh, B start. Yep. He's been B plus even maybe B plus. Yeah. I don't know. I'm willing to go to a B plus, maybe an A minus. Who knows? I, I would uh, say B plus. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> let's go B plus. So I think he's been, uh, yeah, I think he's been better than we expected personally. And again, oh, we, I think he's not, better than the Middleton family expected. <laughs> the Middleton, the middle tie. Uh, yeah, I, he's been he's been you know he's been pretty good. So we'll uh, you know I think he's earned his place, especially when um, uh, when Kanishov comes back, and then you're gonna have to have a conversation about Shimmick or Vlasic and what you want to do there. Um, but I do worry a little bit if playing with Carlson, you know, because if he's not playing with Carlson, what happens? Yeah, what is he just gonna get caved in? Yeah, it's yeah. So if, we'll we'll see. Um... So I think I think Darlene we have as clear the the clear top rookie that's really taken grabbed the brass ring there. Yep. Um I think we had him in an A A minus. We had Darlene well we had Biddleton at a B plus. We had uh E5 and the Lord B at B Who the hell else is on this team? Barabanov as a like question C plus. <laughs> yeah, C plus question Ish, mark. And then Lane Gajovic and Santeri Hataka. Oh no, and then we had Lane at I like a D. D, yeah. Yeah, I think I think D for designated for the press box. Yes. Uh and the then dogs. we have Gajovic. Them dogs. <laughs> D for dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had Gajovic and his Hataka. Hataka. Oh my god. At Incomplete. Jesus. Okay, cool. If you like this exercise and want to see us do something like this again or whatever you want, you can get at us on the Twitter machine at Locked on Sharks. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, also Locked on Sharks. JD puts up all our stuff there, so we will see your messages. Subscribe to YouTube. We're hurtling towards 400. Yeah, we're I almost think. at 350. Yeah, Almost at 350. Thank you spinning, to uh, Insurrection towards... YouTube yeah. uh, for signing up. <laughs> really appreciate it. Music? Nope. Listening to us? Spotify, Amazon, Apple. I only listen to music on there. I listen to I listen to my podcast on Apple. Um, yeah. and I have my music on Spotify. Uh, yeah. So you can listen to us wherever you get your podcast: Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Stitcher, Anchor, Odyssey. I don't know. Underground bunkers, rich people's doomsday bunkers, NATO, yeah. NATO. What's NORAD? I'm sure, NORAD. You can get it through NORAD. Um. The Sienna NORAD tracker probably just broadcast. Santa's listening to our stuff in his sleigh. All the good places. Yes. Email. We got some, actually. Oh, boy. Yeah. LockdownSharks at gmail.com. We got one from O'Reilly. Excuse me. Riley said... Uh, Riley actually asked us a real question, so we'll address that uh, later. Uh, sorry, Riley. But he also said, or she, he... Hey. It's a picture. Uh, he's got a cat, a tuxedo cat, which is dope. Nice. Yes, I started listening to this podcast in the summer when my wife was in labor with our first child. I I don't know what that means. <laughs> did you name Did you name your child after one of us? <laughs> please did let you, us know. Did you Do you call your child the Lord? I don't know. Please, <laughs> please, please let us know. There's what, more questions. <laughs> please let us know what to do with this information. What is it like? Was your wife in labor for like six days and you just needed something to do? I don't know. Please help us. Give us more information. Uh, he also then signed off with Riley, bracket Canadian. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for your services. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I like knowing where people are from, apparently. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Our friend Lance, who compared Barabanov to Alexander Koroluk uh, in an email to us, said, I take it back. I've seen enough Barabanov, LOL. Uh, <laughs> 
We haven't seen enough Baron Banoff. That's a problem. <laughs> the other the other hockey players should be asking, where's Alexander? <laughs> okay, so then we got an actual really well, not a really evil, but we got a good one. I'm gonna read mm. this thing in its entirety. It's funny. Oh, good. Uh, it's from Elena. Last name, aggressively Italian last name. <laughs> it says you, capital do, have an Italian listener. So our shit was called out. Also, why don't people use capitals anymore? Anyway, mm-hmm. here to fact check your assumption that you have no Italian listeners. You have at least one. Benissimo. Hey. Bellissimo. I took Italian university. Hmm. From Milan, but at the moment I live in London. The good one. So that's why I may not show in the map of your listeners. Also, I don't mm-hmm. know if one listener will show on our map. I think there might be a cutoff. I got to dig in deeper, yeah. So. Okay, we'll dig in. Anyway. She confirmed that water is expensive. I wasn't lying. I've been to Italy and I studied Italy for three years in, in school. Uh, it's not a thing to ask for tap water at restaurants. It's either fancy bottled water or nothing. This is good information for you, JD. You better be listening. Okay. There's a region in the north of Italy where they have an unwritten law that any bar, restaurant, cafe has to have one wine option that costs less than a coffee. Huh. That wine is probably horrendous. Probably. That's probably like vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, in that region, they are big drinkers. No shit. JD. You should go to Italy in 2026 for the Olympics. Mm. And I can already name three spots in Milan where Timo will go because I know my fancy Swiss bitches. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, it continues. So you can meet him and drive around in his Maserati with him. JD has a wife. I think he, I don't think he'll be entering the Maserati at this point. But uh, I'm guessing Timo knows where the fancy Swiss bitches are too. Oh, I think Timo knows where the fancy Swiss You'd like to email us in confidentiality. I, well, I could read it if you want us to, but let us know where those three spots are. I would like <laughs> Kyle to see would like to know. Doing. Kyle's interested. <laughs> I would. No, I'm big. I'm big. I'm big on the down under now. Yeah. Get out of here, Europe. Okay, that's it. Love the pod. Love the content. As a woman, I could do with less ads about shaving your balls, but what can you, what can you do, eh? We don't make the ads. We, we just read them. Us. That's how yeah. we get paid, guys. Sorry. I'm we sure like you could use the ball ads for your... Fancy switch, switch pitches. <laughs> yeah, for whatever you got to do. Uh, Elena, P.S. P.S. Finally putting to... Why do people use P.S.? Mm-hmm. P.S. Finally putting to good use my Catholic education as I can quote Bible verses with the Lord in it whenever weather be scores. The Lord is gracious and courageous. <laughs> the Lord is royalty, everybody. It's royalty. This is not a godlike character. <laughs> He's royalty. I mean, do what you want. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not sentient in the world. The brand is strong, but uh, the Lord means royalty. We call them Lord Jasper Weather because Jasper Weatherby sounds like some dickhead duke from like 18th century Victorian England. Yeah, um, that was just like duke beating Jasper, down peasants. Lord Jasper sounds way better than Duke Jasper or yeah, you know, something or like Marquise, that. Marquise Marquise Jasper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Baron, we could have went with Baron, but the Baron Lord is Jasper. Better. But anyway, yeah. if you want to keep doing your religious Lord thing, go for it. We're not going to stop you. But Goodness. just so everybody is clear, not a religious thing, royalty thing. Yep. Also, because this person is Italian, instead of saying "sent for my iPhone," it says "inviato da iPhone." Nice, <laughs> which is sick. This is the best email I've ever received in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> ciao. <laughs> I'm JD. You can find me at my fry hole. Oh That's yeah, Kyle. shit. <laughs> That's JD Kyle. <laughs> at Kyle's at Kyle Demetrius. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with the recap of the Canadians game. We figured if you want to know about the pre- the Canadians, just go listen to last week's episode. So yeah, yeah, they're the same messy bitches. Uh, <laughs> there's none, no Swiss ones. Same <laughs> messy French bitches as they were before. <laughs> can we go now? <laughs> Thanks for making us your first listen. Go get ball shaving stuff from the ball shaving store. Ciao, Amici.